Welcome, everybody. We are back with another. This is a special Geico Google Hangout here. We are. I am Ron Randner, Senior Associate Commissioner at the Northeast Conference here in Somerset, New Jersey. Before I get to our special guest today, I want to remind everybody today's NEC Google Hangout is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Please visit geico.com. Now today, it doesn't get any bigger than today's guest. Joining me on the today's Geico Google Hangout, the newly minted 2013-14 NEC Player of the Year. He is Carvel Anderson of Robert Morris University. How you doing, Carvel? Good to have you back. I'm doing good. Thank you. Appreciate being back. All right. So now you've had a little time to let this sink in. First of all, where'd you find out today? Were you in class when when it was revealed, or what was going on? Um, you know, actually, I was. I didn't have class this morning, and I was, you know, I was hanging out uh, with my girlfriend, and we were just, you know, she reminded me that they were, they were posting things starting at eleven o'clock. So I was kind of, me and her were just kind of following the feed like everybody else on Twitter, and just, you know, waiting to see, you know, what awards were given out. Now, when it got down to that last award, and you knew it was coming, were you just? I mean, you had to be. It's just nature, human nature, to be a little nervous. Were you? Were you was the blood starting to uh, flow a little bit? Um, yeah, you know, it, it definitely was. I wasn't, um, you know, I wasn't sure who was going to get it, um, and you know, I felt I had as good a chance as anybody. So, you know, I got pretty nervous when they they put a tweet up. It was like, I can't remember how it was, but it was like, in the in the the highest honor goes to, and then it's the dot dot dot, and <laughs> you know, it kind of it, it, it hurt me a little bit waiting for it, but you know. It was a good feeling. Got to build the tension. That's yeah. how you do it. It's show business. <laughs> um, so you've had a little time to let it sink in now. How does it feel knowing that the coaches around the league recognized you as, as the best of the best in the NEC this year? Um, you know, it still hasn't even fully sunk into me. Um, you know, I'm just getting out of practice. You know, I've had to focus on preparing for a big day tomorrow all day, so I haven't really had time to you know, to kind of let it all sink in, but it's a tremendous thing. Um, you know, it's, it's always nice to be recognized by your peers and, you know, by other teams and, you know, especially when it's people that you battle with every night um, to be able to recognize you for, you know, what you work so hard at doing. When you came to Robert Morris or even before your senior season, was this something that you ever thought could happen? Was it an individual goal of yours? Um, you know, I wouldn't say – when I first came here, um, but definitely uh, before this season, before the start of my senior season, it was something that, you know, I told myself and, you know, I told a lot of my teammates and, um, you know, at the end of last year, I do a, you know, evaluation and, and a, a goal sheet of what we wanted to accomplish, you know, the following season individually and, you know, collectively as a team. And, you know, this was one of my goals. You know, it wasn't something that, you know, I was going to, you know, die if I didn't get player year, which is something that I kind of was, was holding myself to so I could, you know, I could improve myself, you know, as a player that's type to, you know, something I could hold myself to. You know, I just wanted to become that level of player and, and you know, get to that level of play throughout at the end of my senior year. When you look at the previous winners of this honor from Robert Morris, it's like a who's who in colonial history, Jeremy Chappelle and Tony Lee and now, newly uh, NEC Hall of Famer, just uh, honored Myron Walker, Chipper Harris. Um, these are guys, I'm sure there's names that you've heard along the way. Mm -hmm. um, how does it feel knowing that you're joining a group that's immortalized in the trophy cases that you walk by every single day? And now you're going to be in there. Um, you know, it feels amazing. Um, those guys' names get brought up a lot, um, you know, especially being around dudes a lot. You know, dudes got all the records, and, you know, he has everything, and um, he talks about those guys a lot. And, um, you know, recently we had a, a Hall of Fame induction here, and I got to meet a lot of those guys and shake hands with some of those guys and have conversations with them. And just, you know, it feels good that, you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll be, you know, in their place, you know, doing what they were doing and helping us. And, you know, it's just a tremendous feeling. Let's talk about your game and some of your big games this season. Um, you know, one that had me shaking my head recently was what you did against LIU when you scored 20 points in seven minutes down the stretch. And big, that was a big win for you guys. You, uh, you came from 16 down. When you're, when, you're, when you're heating up like that, and I think I asked you this last time we spoke, what does it feel like when the shots just start falling? Is it like, just give me that ball? I mean, what was that night like for you? Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely you get to a – give me the ball type of, you know, moment. And, um, you know, my teammates are always very, 
willing to to allow me to do that when I have those type of games and when I'm feeling that way. Um, I had a, a poor first half, I'll say. Um, you know, I wasn't assertive, and my teammates, you know, I even told the reporters, Dave Appelon, he threw a Gatorade at me in the locker room, and they kind of kind of woke me up a little bit, and, you know, I had um, you know, I had a lot of things going on uh, mentally that I let affect me in the first half of the game, and, you know, that Gatorade going past my face definitely woke me up, and, you know, I, I didn't want to let my teammates down, and, you know, I definitely didn't think I was going to have a second half like that, but from an aggression standpoint, you know, I knew I was going to try to be more assertive and, you know, more aggressive with the basketball. And, you know, my teammates were just, just begging me and allowing me to do so. And, you know, it just happened to, to end the way it did. Has it been something all season long where you felt real com comfortable with your shot that you felt like, you know, is it is it any different than last season or earlier in your career? Is it just coming natural, more easy to you now? Um, You know, I'm, I've always been a very – confident person um, when it comes to my ability to shoot the basketball but you know last year kind of uh, tainted that confidence for me a little bit with you know the wrist injuries and the surgeries and, and even the surgery this summer kind of you know left questions in my head on if I'd be able to to be the same shooter that I was before um, anybody at Robert Morris even got to see me play um, you know, but the fact that I've been healthy, at least with my wrist, uh, throughout the course of the season has definitely boosted my confidence. And, you know, it's allowed me to, to work on my game a lot more. Um, it's allowed me to add more things to my game and be more versatile scoring the basketball. And, you know, I've, I've increased the, the quickness of my release. And, you know, because the defense at this level closes out to you so quickly, um, you know, I don't have all day to get my shot off. And especially when defenses started keying on me a little more, I needed – um, to, to be able to release my my shot a little more efficiently at a, at a higher speed. And, you know, thankfully, with health, I was able to do that. Now, you, you talked about expanding your game. Now, one of the, I think one of the more memorable plays I've seen in the NEC this season is that in this, this spin move, split the defense, scoop shot layup that you mm -hmm. made against LIU in that game. Is that, is that part of your arsenal that you, want to, that you can really bring out? Um, yeah, you know, I feel like I'm not just – you know, last year kind of hurt my my feelings a little bit when people just label me as a, a three-point shooter and just don't let him shoot threes. Um, you know, I feel like I, I can finish around the rim. Um, you know, I work very well on my mid-range game. I'm actually more confident in my mid-range game than my three-point. Um, you know, and, and just being able to finish around the basket was something I was going to have to add to my game, being that people were going to force me we're, we're not going to let me shoot jump shots all day anymore. And, um, you know, the shot, the spin move was something that just, you know, I can't, it just kind of happened in the moment like that. Um, you know, I just, it, it wasn't the move I was going for, but, you know, Brickman kind of cut off where I was going and just was instinct and reaction. And, you know, but the finish at the rim was something that, you know, Coach Tool has us work on every single day, you know, uh, when we're preparing for practice. So, you know, it wasn't anything new to me. It's something that I've practiced hundreds of thousands of times, um, you know, since I've been here, and, you know, it, it, it looked good. Yeah, you know things are really going good for you when you can throw up an air ball and, <laughs> and you can win a game with that, which, you know, when you guys won the NEC regular season title on a famous, now famous, Carvel Anderson air ball converted <laughs> by Lucky Jones. How was that? What was that moment like for you? Um, You know, I, I, I guess that would be – the, the first and last air ball I'll ever be proud of, um, you know, but it, they played good defense on me, the, you know, the entire game, and I wasn't able to get a cleanest look. And, um, you know, lucky being a player he is, he's a tremendous rebounder. Um, you know, he just was aggressive. You know, he didn't get boxed out. He made a play, and he saved us. You know, I just – it, it would have hurt not winning the, the regular season championship on senior night. You know, that opportunity that we had was something that – um, the way it ended is something that I'm never going to forget. Speaking of Lucky, uh, how, how does it feel knowing that he joined you on an all-conference team, second team, all-NEC, and then your coach, Andy Toole, being named Coach of the Year? Um, you know, it's a, again, it's a great you know accomplishment for our team. I mean, I think if you ask Lucky or, or you know anybody else on our on our staff and on our team, we feel like you know Lucky could have easily been on first team. Um, you know, but to make any team at all is a tremendous honor. You know, that's something that you work for. Um, you know, it's always good to get recognized, and it's nothing new to Lucky. He's been some type of selection every year he's been in college. So, 
you know, he's a blue collar guy and he works hard as anybody every day. And, you know, he, he steady improves his game. He puts as much hours into the gym as anybody. And, you know, Tool is the same way. You know, he's, you know, very dedicated to his craft. He's very dedicated to, you know, his players and this program. And, you know, it's finally paying off for us. Let's talk a little bit about Robert Morris as you're entering the postseason now. How much satisfaction do you take um, from your team facing some adversity this year and then th really thriving under those conditions and finishing as the regular season champions? Um, you know, we take a lot, of, a lot of pride in that because we feel like, you know, over the, the course of the tournament, you know, um, whatever situation we'll be, we'll be put in, whatever obstacle we'll be faced with, we've seen before. You know, nothing will be new to us. Um, and, you know, and that's something that a lot of teams can't say. You know, a lot of teams don't have, you know, we might not have the experience, um, you know, years-wise when it comes to people who, to players who've been at this level for as long as other teams, but we've been through just as many adverse situations as anybody in the league, um, you know, just from this past season. And, you know, that's something that, you know, we hold our hats on because we've overcome a lot of those things given the circumstances we've been faced with. And, um, you know, that's just something that I think can help us going forward. Um, it's going to keep holding us together. And you can't win this league unless, you know, you're a strong team and, and everybody on the team is working towards the same goal. And, you know, we feel like we have that. Is there a bit of a, like a sort of an us against the world thing going now, the eight strong, eight is enough type thing for you guys? Yeah, yeah, the crazy eight is still rocking. We feel like it's the crazy eight against everybody. And, you know, it's going to stay that way. All uh, right, let's look at the NEC tournament. Uh, you finished 14 and 2 in the regular season, number one seed. So mission accomplished, part one. Okay, mm -hmm. but there's more to go. Uh, but now you got the target on your back, number one seed again this year. Um, last year you slipped. There was a little. There was a slip in the semis. Um, what does RMU have to do to bring home title number eight to Moon Township? Um, you know, we got to stick to our formula and continue to to play like we were when the first night we found out we lost those, you know, four guys. Um, you know, we found out we were losing those four players and we realized, like, wow, there's really only eight of us. You know, and we came together. <laughs> you know, we realized how small our margin of error was and we worked every day in every game like, you know, it was just us against, you know, like we said, it was us against the world and we had to do it together. And I feel like we have to continue to have that mindset, um, continue to stay humble and be hungry and, and know know that, yes, we won the regular season championship, but everyone in this in our locker room's ultimate goal is to win the championship. Um, you know, you know, Coach Tua, obviously, he has one as an assistant, but um, as a head coach, he doesn't. You know, the way we look at it is nobody on our team has a championship, so why not all get it together? Um, you know, let, let us be the first people to do that um, for Coach Tua. You know, that's what he deserves, and that's what this program deserves. Well, the first step in the process is tomorrow night, uh, Fairleigh Dickinson. Now, obviously, you had a tough game against them just last week. A rally, you had to rally late to beat them uh, out in New Jersey. Um, tell us about FDU and what you expect uh, tomorrow night from them. Uh, you know, FDU is a, a really good team. They're a very talented team. Um, you know, Sidney Sanders could have easily, you know, I could have woke up this morning seeing him as the player of the year. Um, you know, he's that good of a player. Um, you know, the, the coaching staff over there has done an incredible job um, turning that program around and, and getting them to buy in. And, you know, it's not the same FDU team that you see in the past. Um, you know, they're a hard-nosed team, and they want to win. And they could have beat us last time. They came out hungry. Um, you can tell by the guys that they have that they, they work hard every day. It's just they have a different mentality on the court than, than I remember seeing last year when we played them um, both times. And they are a team that they can be anybody in this league. You know, if they have. They can play with anybody in this league. It's not like they're an eight seed, so we're just got to show up to the game and, you know, we're going to win. Like, we have to come there and prepare like, you know, it's a championship game. Every game is a championship game, and, you know, the first championship game is tomorrow. So when you play this first championship game tomorrow at the Sewell Center, what do you expect the atmosphere will be like there? You know, I have a lot of faith in, in our Colonial Crazies, and I feel like they're going to come out and show us some love and some support. Um, they've been great the past few weeks. Um, even at our girls game last night, uh, the crowd was tremendous. You know, it was a, a big show out for that. Um, you know, I, I feel like our fans and, and our campus wants this just as bad as we do, so I know they'll be there. It's a special time for, for Robert Morris with the men and the women, both the number one seed. We saw you last night at the women's game supporting all the women with your teammates. Um, last question. 
Um, you won the NEC Player of the Year award. What would bookending it with an NEC title mean to end your career here at Robert Morris? Uh, that would be a dream come true. Um, you know, winning Player of the Year was never, you know, up until last year, was never my, was never a dream of mine. Making the NCAA tournament was always a dream growing up. Um, so to be able to do that with adding, you know, the Player of the Year and the Coach of the Year um, for Andy Tool, you know, on our on our resumes would be something that, you know, I just, you can't write a better story than that with everything we faced, all the things we had to overcome, you know, all the things I've had to overcome, you know, it's just something that it'd be a perfect ending to, to the story. All right, folks. Well, you heard from him. He's the man of the hour. He's a, a great player, a great interview, uh, uh, humble, uh, humble as they come, class act, Carvel Anderson. He's our 2013-14 NEC Men's Basketball Player of the Year. You'll get a chance to see him uh, tomorrow night against FDU, FDU in the NEC quarters on NEC front row, and then maybe we'll see him over the weekend and in, uh, in the semis and maybe the championship next week. Hey, Carvel, thanks for joining me again. Uh, congratulations on a great season, and good luck in the playoffs. No, thank you. Anytime, anytime I'm welcome. You got it. All right, well, that was Carville Anderson. I'm Ron Radner. Today's NEC Google Hangout was brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com. We'll see you next time on our NEC GEICO Google Hangout.